Good morning guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another episode of Rift Amps. So we've had quite a busy week here at Rift. I've been steaming along with quite a few repairs, builds, visit to our new dealer, Coda Music in Stevenage. I've got some footage later on where I do a walk around of the store, you'll get to see that. And I've also got some news on those 69 fuzz faces. So this is a late 70s, I believe, Fender Pro Reverb that's come in for um, reverb was not working. Unfortunately, it's faulty tank. Both transducers are open circuit, so that one is dead. New tank installed, all sorted. But what I wanted to show you was in the back of it is the in, is the original Fender owner's manual for this amplifier. Manual number 013918. Now, this is really cool. So we open it up. It's for the Pro Reverb, Super Reverb, and the Bandmaster Reverb amplifiers. Explaining what all the controls and things do. But here's here's what I found most funny. To get the most distortion, turn the vibrato channel volume control all the way to 10, pull the master volume control out, and adjust it to the desired sound level. It is important to have the volume and tone controls of the guitar turned to their maximum to get the most distortion from the amplifier. And then it tells you how to get the cleanest sound too. You just don't see that anymore. Anyway, first couple of pages explain what the amplifier does, how it works, what to do if things aren't working. And then there's a little brochure in the back of the amplifier, including the Fender Blender, the Fuzz and Sustain pedal, which you rarely see, and the Fuzz, Wah and Volume pedal. And then look, the 70s lineup of Fender guitars, the Tele, the Tele Custom, the Tele Deluxe, and the Strat with the large headstock. That's really, really cool. So yeah, that's interesting. Thought you'd all be interested in that. But this Pro Reverb, I didn't film the repair because it was very, very simple. Again, just a faulty reverb tank. But yeah, job done. Right, so this is that 6G3 head. That's now complete. I'm happy with it. It's ready to go. Just got to box it up into its head cabinet that I'll show you shortly. Get it in a box. Customer can have it. Uh, that was that wheelhouse repair. Uh, that's going back to Coda. This is an Americana LP, the uh, the one I showed you last week. That's going to Coda as well. They're having that for stock. And out the front is all boxed up, ready for shipping. Is that green and gold PR18? Um, it's off to France. So yeah, quite a few amps going out the door. I've just had another cabinet arrive. This is another Americana cabinet. So we get that going and. Yeah, crack on. And there we go, one 6G3 head. So you've got two channels, normal and bright, each with a volume and tone, and then you've got the two tremolo controls, speed and intensity. Really happy with this one. Love the way it sounds. It's come out great. Customer's going to be really happy with it. And uh, now I can crack on with the other ones. Right, so I've had this Mesa Boogie F30 dropped in. Uh, by a good customer of mine. Now, I don't usually touch Mesa Boogies. I'm not interested in them. There used to be a distributor in the UK for Mesa Boogie who offered technical support on the amplifiers. Um, they've gone and Mesa Boogie now sell direct to dealers, so there is no support from the manufacturer unless you're an authorised repair centre, which I am not, so I usually just turn these away. But my customer... Um, asked if I'd help and I want to see what I can do. So the issue, he says, is that there's no output on the clean channel, but on channel two and the channel two with the contour, there is output. So I said, that, you know, there's a chance I might not be able to fix this, but I'm happy to have a look and see if we can, you know, at least get some kind of diagnostic direction. Uh, so let's get this thing apart and have a look inside. Okay, so on inspection, it doesn't look as complicated as other Mesa Boogie models, which is a good thing. Um, 
on the visual inspection, I can't see anything burnt or blown or anything that looks out of place, apart from it's got this big bolt sticking up through the centre of the chassis. Can you see that? But there it is on the other side. It doesn't even stick in all the way. Is that right? You know, as I said, I don't really touch these, so I don't know if that's correct or not. Um, let's have a look at the valve, see what we can see. Got a set of groove tube EL84s. don't really like these clips, um, shields. I mean, look, all the rubber's just falling apart. This is not good. Doesn't look blown to me. I'll just go through and check the others, but I don't think this is a valve problem, but I do need to have a look online to see if I can find a schematic for this circuit, because without it, I'm kind of flying blind. I mean, how on earth do you work on that without a schematic? Okay, so it's running on the test bench. I'm, I'm currently on channel one clean, the one he said wasn't working, master up full, mid up full and there's our sine wave it's working switch to the channel 2 working channel 2 with contour working um, okay uh, it's passing audio however it's a dual EL84 amplifier there they are so it's, it should be, I would have thought, 12, 15, 18 watts, somewhere around there. But we're only getting 4.88 volts RMS output, which puts us into 8 ohms, which is what we're driving, somewhere between 2.5 and, and 3 watts. Um, yeah, that's not right. So... The amplifier is unwell, it is running poorly, but why is it down on power? What's going on? The channel's working. The only thing I did notice was when I was just fiddling with this, it came to like a a hard spot, like there was something stuck in there, and then as I as I wiggled it, it worked its way loose. I don't know. Again, I don't know much about these amplifiers. I'm gonna pull the schematic, see what I can learn, see if we can work out what's going on. But it's down it's working, but it's down on power. Okay, so I've taken some bias measurements. Uh, first thing I do is check the negative bias voltage on the control grid of the output valve, with both 11.2 volts, and the schematic that I found online calls for, at that part in the circuit, negative 11 volts, so we'll call that good. Um, there are, it's a fixed bias amplifier, so there's no cathode resistor, so we need to use the transformer method of measuring the bias. The way you do that is, first of all, you measure the anode to cathode voltage, which in this case would be anode to ground on each side. We've got 395 and 398. Okay, close enough. You then measure the voltage drop across the transformer winding, so from the anode to the centre tap on each side. And as you can see, you've got quite a discrepancy, just over 6 volts on one side and 3.24 on the other. You then switch the amplifier off drain it of all any residual charge and then measure the resistance between the anode and the center tap on each side and we've got 222 ohms on one side and 215 ohms on the other now they are never never exact because one one winding is done first and then the other is done on top so obviously has more wire for the same amount of turns anyway we can then use ohm's law to calculate our anode current 
which is 27.4 milliamps on this side and only 15 on that side. Maximum for an EL84 is 12, so we end up with 10.8 on one side and 6 on the other. So we've got quite a, a big discrepancy there. We've got a mismatch set of output valves. Um, I've just played the amplifier with the guitar, and it is quite loud. It is putting out a lot of volume, but for some reason on the test equipment, I'm only getting 5 watts or so. I don't understand that. Maybe I've uh, confused myself with something. But either way, the measurements I have taken, the concrete evidence that I do have, is that we've got a mismatched set of output valves. So I'm going to recommend to the customer that we change those, but his initial complaint that you know one channel wasn't working, um, it is. So yeah, let's see what he wants to do. Right, so back on this Americana build, I have marked out the chassis and had, and started to drill or have drilled the holes a lot of people ask me why i do this when rather than just have them made or ready to go well it's because i continually evolve them basically every time i build an amp um, i work out better ways to do things and i make notes of that and then on the next one i implement those changes now uh, sometimes it's just moving a hole slightly or changing the routing of something, but sometimes it's something quite fundamental. And of course, if I'd had the chassis pre-made and drilled um, in advance, it might be a waste of money. So it's, I, it doesn't take long to mark out and drill and punch a chassis. Um, but it just makes things so much better in the long run. Anyway, so as you can see, I've drilled all my holes. But we're left with these burrs, which need deburring. So we've got this tool here, deburring tool, aka a whirly bob. And it's just a case of in there and you just drag it around. I can't do it one handed, but it will. It just cleans those up. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of those. And then we end up with a nice clean chassis ready to start building. The customer has approved a new set of EL84s. I've fitted in the amp, I've checked the bias, we're all good. We're now matched within one milliamp, which I'm perfectly happy with. Checking the amp on the scope, we've now got a much higher output. So it's barely getting above five volts peak to peak, we're now at nearly 12. So this amplifier is performing a lot healthier than it was before. Good news. So I'm just going to leave it burning in for a couple of hours. Make sure I'm happy with it. After that, I'll come back. I'll recheck all of the measurements. Make sure nothing's uh, shifted. Tweak the bias again if required. Then we can reassemble it back in the cabinet and call this one complete. But both channels are working. In fact, all three channels. So, yeah, we'll call that one good. Uh, so this is the one, when you do one with the reverb and tremolo. So if you remember last week, we had our Black Friday limited run of amps and pedals. Well, this is the prototype of the 69 Fuzz. This isn't what it's going to look like. This is just in a, in a standard enclosure just to prove it works. Two knobs on and off. But yeah, we're doing it on 
I decided to do it like this on two small strips of eyelet board. Again, this is just a prototype, so it's, it's a bit rough, but I wanted to show you. Um, got all the components spanning across the middle, like so, proper point to point, hand wired, as you all like to see. So um, uh, I'm now happy to go ahead and, and start production on these for those that did order. If you didn't order, you missed out. I'm really sorry, but you know, it's not a limited run if everyone can buy them. So yeah, I've just got to um, get the enclosure design done now, get the enclosure screen printed um, and made up, and then they can get here, I can drill them, and I can um, do the final build on all of those units for those lucky people that put their order in and got one. So that's that chassis now done. I have also done the, um, if I can get that off, I can't. I've done the board mounts, Loctite is in of course. Just checking that it all fits. So now I can go through, mount all my sockets and jacks and things. I've even punched the IEC hole out for the IEC socket. So that's good to go. Start putting some grommets in, making good progress on this. This is a full power Americana, if I haven't said already. Making good progress on that. Really happy. Um, more updates next week. Just a quick update on this Angelista signature build. I have started wiring in the preamp sockets. Just got to finish off the output sockets. The control side of the board, heaters, output transformer, mains transformer, that kind of stuff. But yeah, good progress on that one. Well, that's it then, guys. Thank you very much for watching once again. I really appreciate everyone who tuned in and watched last week. We had record viewers on the channel. Don't know why, but it seemed to kick off and it worked really well. You seem to like the stuff we were putting out. So thank you very much. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell and subscribe if you haven't. And I shall see you all next week. Something a little bit different, this is an airbag module from a 1994 Mazda MX-5. As most of you know, I race MX-5s in my spare time. I also drive one on the road, but for someone else on a forum, uh, on the 1994 model, the airbag module is known to fail, and it was only used in that year. 95 onwards, it had a different system. And you can't buy these from Mazda anymore, and not many people are prepared to repair them, but... I said I would quite happily have a go. Common issue on them is the electrolytic capacitors start to leak, start to damage the board, and then you start to get warning lights on the dashboard. So, chap sent this to me. I'm just going to replace all the capacitors on the board. Unfortunately, my car is a 1992, so I can't plug this in to test it afterwards. So, um, we won't know if the repair is fixed until he fits it to his car. But yes, there you go. 1994 Mazda MX-5 airbag module. Those pins in there need cleaning up too. So, anyway, thanks for watching. See you all next week.